And we're coming to you live for the Build Four Tough Studio Boomer Size and Greg Giannotti. It's Boomer and Geo on the fans, simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network. And wherever you are in the free Odyssey app, good Thursday morning. Didn't go the way that Rangers fans wanted it last night in game one against the Florida Panthers, but it is game one. And the adjustments will be made. This is not a freak out day. This is an okay, we've got a different animal on our hands type of day. And the Florida Panthers were able to take their game into Madison Square Garden and win this one. And I don't want to say win it easily, but they did feel like they were in control for most of the game is what the Panthers have done for most of the year. They're just as good at home as they are on the road. So it's not an uncomfortable situation for them. And Igor was not as good as Bobrovsky in game one. Now, will there be some lineup changes? It's a possibility. People screaming for Rempe. I don't know if that's going to cure some of the things that they weren't great at last night. But one thing is clear. Carolina Hurricanes were good. The Florida Panthers are better. And if the Rangers are going to want to win this series and get right back into it, not go down 2-0, they're going to have to play a different style than they did last night. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning. I'm annoyed. It's exactly how I am. And I think I speak for all Ranger fans when I say that because, you know, going into this series, what did I tell you? That the Rangers were going to have to take it up a notch, that they were going to have to be more physical. They're going to have to be aware of the physicality. They were going to have to be able to handle the physicality. And I really felt like early on in the game that the defense looked like they were overwhelmed. And they were overwhelmed because they were panicking with the puck. And when you have a whiff behind the net and then you have a hooking penalty and then you're in the penalty box like Jacob Truba was, you know, you realize like, wait a minute, you've been around for a long enough time to realize what you're going against, what you're playing against. And that was kind of like uh, a symptom of watching that game last night. A flat game again by the Rangers at home in front of a packed crowd. That seemed to be quiet. Uh, McDonough and, uh, of course, Ray Ferraro were talking about that as the game was going on last night. And I know there are people out there that are all Rempe fans. They want him out there, and they want him to set a tone, bring some energy to the team, and the team looked like it needed energy last night. So I can understand why a guy like Mark Messier would say that Rempe should be in the lineup, and I'm not going to second-guess Mark Messier because he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Ranger of all time, uh, simply because of the way that he would play and, and would lead the team. But... I mean, you know, you could see that Matthew Kachuk and his uh, band of merry men, they, they want to bring the heat. They want they want to hit you, and they're all over you. And when you're a defenseman, whether you're Ryan Lindgren or Jacob Truba or uh, Adam Fox, uh, and you're in the corners, they're going to fight your ass to go get the puck. And that's what I'm talking about when I say you got to take it up a notch. When you go into those corners, you got to fight for that puck, and you got to go get it. And you can't be happy if it's – you can't be passive against this team. You know, if you're, uh, if you're Ross Levesque, you can't just be out there skating around, you know, trying to find open ice because there's very little open ice. you got to go through it, and you got to go make the play. And, you know, there's, there was a little bit too much passiveness last night for me, uh, and I think for most Ranger fans, and I think most Ranger fans, especially those who went to the game last night, will tell you that the energy just wasn't in the building. I think that's why, you know, Mark uh, Messier would like to have uh, Matt Rempe in there, but you know, look, well, Igor gave up a soft goal early on. This could have been a zero-zero game going into overtime. Yeah, I mean, it, right, it, and it probably should have been. Uh, but as far as the the energy in the building, I think th- there's a couple of factors that play into that. First, when you are when you give up the first goal and you're down one nothing, I mean, I also think that there's a nervousness amongst fans for every fan base when you're playing a really good opponent. And you start to lose. So it's like the, the the initial reaction when you're a fan in the building, when you're down one nothing against a team that you were nervous about to begin with, is not to be standing up going, all right, guys, let's go. It's more like, oh, God, here we go, and being nervous. And plus the nature of hockey, and I heard Jerry say this this morning too, which is something that is that is, is so true, is that there there's very few times in the course of just five-on-five play unless you're scoring a goal where the fans are just standing up and going crazy. I mean, you generally you're watching the game, watching it unfold. If there's a big hit or a fight, you go crazy. So, I mean, as far as the energy in the building, you know, the Rangers needed to score. The Rangers needed to control play, and neither one of those things happened. Well, there, there's a guy on, on Florida that is probably the smallest guy on the ice, and his name's Ryan Lomberg. 
He's like and five eight or something. Five he? nine, yes. Yeah. And he was the one that had the goaltender interference last night, which was the proper call against him as he went into the blue paint and he uh, got in the way of Igor Shosturkin. Uh, but that guy's effort and that guy blocking pucks and that guy going into the corner and getting the puck is a prime example of a player that is small in size but yet a pain in the ass on the ice and was not going to be like denied last night. You could see the effort. He didn't play a lot, a, a ton of minutes, but you could see the effort. And instead of you know shying away from contact or uh, being passive in the corner uh, or not you know not blocking a puck and getting out of the way of a shot, I mean that that kind of stuff. This guy laid it on the line, and it's just a small example of one person on that team who was the smallest person on the ice. So it, it just kind of tells you. Uh, you know, where the effort level is. I'm not, look, they're all playing hard. Don't get me wrong. We're in the Eastern Conference Finals. And it's game one, and it was a disappointing game. It was another flat game like game five against Carolina was. But uh, it was right there. It was nip and tuck. The game was tight. A soft goal by Igor, an unfortunate uh, deflection by Lafreniere. And it's 2 nothing. And as Ray Ferraro said last night, you really felt like it was 10 nothing because of the way that the Florida Panthers were smothering the Rangers. And the Rangers, look, they had two breakaways. Now, unfortunately, those breakaways <laughs> went to Braden Schneider and Will Cooley. Right, it wasn't Panarin and Zabinich. Right, exactly. Uh, but they st- they had two breakaways, and, and, and Schneider hit the post. And, and late in the third uh, period, you know, on, when they were on the power play, you could see that, you know, they were starting to move the puck around. They were getting some shots at the net, and sometimes you need a little puck luck, and that didn't happen for them last night. So, again, what I am more concerned about than anything else is just they have to take it up a notch when it comes to the the edge that they have to play with and realize that this team that they're playing against has played the game this way all season long. Well, they also went to a cup final last year. And they and, know what it takes. And even, yeah. and even uh, Alexander Barkov, their captain, and Ray Ferraro was, was giving us this story last night, said in the offseason after they lost to Vegas last year, I'm going to lose some weight. And I'm going to come back with a, a much edgier kind of personality in the way I play. I think I'm paraphrasing that a little bit, but that was kind of like the sense that you got from Alexander Barkov. Barkov. And, uh, you know, he's right in the middle of everything, and he's a pain in the ass to deal with too. But that's that's what the Rangers, if I had to say what they were lacking last night, to me, that's that's the edge that uh, Dave Maloney talks about, Steve Valquette talks yeah. about. Henrik Lundqvist talks about, Mark Messier talks about, they all talk about it. And you could see it last night where I felt like Florida was smothering the Rangers and forechecking the Rangers into mistakes. Right, and that takes us back into the Matt Rempe point as well. So everybody that's saying that they lack the edge and Matt Rempe being on the ice is going to be something that replaces that. And, and, and I disagree with it in, in this way. When Matt Rempe was out there in the Hurricane series. He he had like four and a half minutes of ice time, and he wasn't fighting anybody. Now, you want to tell me just his presence out there and it gets the fan base going and he's a fan favorite and, you know, maybe that energizes a crowd. I, I'm just, I, I don't think it's going to do that much. What you need is the guys that are consistently on the ice having more of that edge and winning those puck battles in the corner and taking it to the Panthers and not being the ones that are getting knocked down, but being the ones that are knocking the Panthers down. And if you're telling me four and a half minutes of Matt Rempe on the ice, not fighting anybody is going to do that, then fine, put him out there. But that's all you're going to get from him is four and a half minutes well, and I like mean, maybe a shot on goal. Like, I, I don't get it. I, I do know that, uh, as uh, Larry Brooks wrote this morning, that Peter Laviolette does have options. There are other players that he could put in the lineup if he doesn't like the way somebody is playing. And, you know, let's face it, you know, the Kreider, Zibanejad, and Rossovic line really didn't show up last night. You know, they were minus, I think Kreider was minus two. I think Panarin was on the ice for all three goals against. Uh, and, again, not his fault. I mean, you know, these were two, the first two goals. One was a soft one, and the other one was a, a, an unfortunate deflection, and then the other one was an empty netter. So the, the game was tight. It was defensive in nature. Paul Maurice, their head coach, said, look, I expect two to one, three to two type games. And I think that's the way it's going to be this whole series. And like I said, we have a long way to go. It's disappointing where I'm annoyed this morning at the way that some of the Rangers played and and uh, and didn't play with purpose and didn't play a snarly type game, if you will. A, you know, gritty, that kind of word would describe what I think Florida brought to the table last night. And sometimes it's easier to be the road team, believe it or not. 
Yeah, I mean, you've, I've heard you say that before where you don't have to worry. You know, you're with the team in the hotel and you're, you're more bonded together and there's no distractions of family and friends and people asking for tickets and all that type of stuff. And you're sort of just on this business trip. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, and, and but the, the Panthers have just been that way all year. Sean McDonough was going through the numbers in the beginning of the, the game and just talking about how evenly the Panthers have played both at home and on the road. They're just a solid team. There's just not a lot of flaws there. And I know Sergei Bobrovsky was given a lot of credit last night. I mean, I, I don't think that he stole this game in any way, shape, so or form. Like I, don't, like, I think the take of, well, Bobrovsky and Shesterkin is is a wash. I, I don't agree with that. I think last night, Igor's the letting in that first goal was, was a bad one, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Sergei Bobrovsky's now the better goaltender in this series. Uh, Igor's got to definitely play better, but uh, it's not like he they're going. One, he gave it's up not one. Dominic Hasek we're talking about. Right. Here. I mean, I, he, Igor gave up one goal that he'd like to have back. The other two, there's really not. You know, one's an empty netter. The other one's a deflection off of his own player's stick. So it, those things are going to happen. I mean, Rangers have to shoot better. Uh, you know, they they got to get the puck through. You know, that's not an easy thing to do in the NHL, especially against a defensive first team like Florida is. You know, they have enough offense where you know their defense creates so much, so much, so much problems, or so many problems uh, for the Rangers' defense with their forecheck, and the, and the Rangers just sometimes just wrapping the puck around the cor- you know, around the boards and throwing it to somebody standing on the point. It's frustrating, and you see all these things when you lose. Obviously, you know, and then when you think about the goal that went off of Lafreniere's stick, I mean, what was Igor thinking about? Yeah, I mean, at that point, did they? <laughs> I mean, Fox. I think Fox was coming back, or one one of the players was coming back to grab the puck, and and they let Igor play it. Well, yeah, that was the thing. So the the reason why it goes through the five hole is because Igor is trying to poke the puck away. Actually, with his, his Gustafson, then I think was on the ice. Yeah, and, and Igor's trying to you know poke the the puck away with his stick, and is just not in any position to stop the puck. So yeah, that was just that was ugly and silly, and something that happens in hockey games occasionally. Um, and unfortunately, it, it it ended the game at that point uh, with about three and a half minutes yeah, to go. Yeah, and, and it just felt like the game never got going offensively uh, for the Rangers. But again, a soft goal. You got to start winning some puck battles. You got to stop throwing the puck away in your own zone. All the normal things that we talk about when a team loses. But I'm also not going to sit here and say, you know, oh my God, they overwhelmed us. I mean, it was a tight game. And these all are going to be tight games simply because of Igor and because of the defensive prowess of the Florida Panthers. I, 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 I doubt very seriously that unless somebody gets hurt in this series, that any team is going to be scoring like four goals in a game. Yeah. I mean, that's the way. And and you mentioned, you know, Paul Maurice said exactly that after the game. So yeah, I mean, this it's, it's unfortunate. You're annoyed. I'm sure that you were tossing and turning, thinking about the things that needed to change last night, but this is, this was not a, a hockey game where you're like, oh, man, this is going to be impossible to win this series. And but, by the way, if Rempe were in the game, yeah, very unlikely he would have gotten any time whatsoever in the third period. Sure, Very yeah. unlikely well, in I mean, a tight he, game like this. Right, and he, did, he didn't. I don't think I'd have to go back and look, but I don't think he did when he played in the Hurricanes. He, he might have got one or two shifts. I, I doubt because of the way the game was unfolding last night and the amount of players that Peter Laviolette was double shifting and putting back out there trying to get some sort of offense going that, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very unlikely that he would have gotten a shift in the third period. So maybe he, you know, the other thing too, is you got to remember. So, you know, Matthew Kachuk is, you know, just like his dad, you know, he likes to run over people yeah, yeah. and he runs over, you know, Vincent Trocek. And that kind of sets the tone for the game. Like, okay, here, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, Will Cooley, uh, Cooley was, he threw his body around. He took out uh, Barkov. And uh, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a physical series. The Rangers has got to take it up a notch. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. I, I'm sure Jerry will have it. But when Jerry asked Al this morning on the warm up show to name one Florida Panther, current Florida Panther, um, what he said was, was remarkable. And so I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I'm, I'm hoping Jerry cut it up, but Al's answer to that was was shocking, really in a way. One shocking that he he actually kind of was kind of knew the guy, 
but what came out of his mouth was a sound and a combination of words that's probably never been said before. Sort of like McClutherness. Okay. You know, no one said McClutherness yes, ever before. Ever, ever and before And then Mike in the said history it, of uh, human, the human right, existence. Right, human speech for all these years and yes. years and years when we were grunting at each other as cavemen. Uh, no one had said McClutherness. What came out of Al's mouth, no one has ever said before either. Like maybe a child. Like a young child learning how to speak. Right. Just putting sounds together. Yes. Maybe that. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, Jerry will probably yeah. have it. I'll tell you the other thing I'm annoyed at, and, and obviously nobody's paying attention. Uh, I'm annoyed at the way that ESPN is shooting these games. Yeah, I know. You I, can't stand it. Yeah. I, I don't know why why there's, the director is shooting the games the way he or she is. I'm not sure who it is. But please, for the love of God. You know, when the game is going on, I don't need to see guys going to the bench. I don't need to see cutaways of people sitting in the stands. Yeah. I need to see the action of the game. It's not that hard of a game to actually shoot when you think about it. You could actually keep the camera, the one camera on, and the most of us would, would enjoy the game so much more than seeing a cutaway of Mika Zibanejad going to the bench while the play is still going on. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm it, like, I, I am like... Or that nobody has actually sat this person down and said, don't do it this way. Well, I think probably the person that would sit the director down hasn't watched a lot of hockey games themselves. Because if you do watch regular season or you're watching the way that MSG does it, it's completely different and it's not it, it, it's not distracting. Right. And yeah, this yeah. is. And a lot of times, you know, the uh the play by play guy will be watching the monitor and he'll be talking off the monitor. Being that, you're seeing what he's talking about. Yeah. And it's it's very distracting when a weird cut comes in the middle of a play out of nowhere. It's almost like somebody is just pushing a button to show another camera to say, hey, we got this many cameras at this game. It's just, it's, it's, it's right, annoying. Right, to show off, like, because you spent the money on it, like, let's just use everything. I, I would, I, you know, and I'm assuming that whoever this person is, is has done ho- plenty of hockey games. Trying to reinvent the wheel I, I, at the wrong time? I, I think sometimes, yes, uh, d- directors tend to over-direct, and they don't listen to the fan bases that are watching these games. And if you're if you're there, you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you're sitting at home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. We- 